Hello and welcome. Today we will be solving this physics paper. Question 1. The graph shows the speed time graph of a pendulum bob oscillating from a point. What is the period of the oscillation of the pendulum bob? Now, one complete oscillation of a pendulum bob comprises of motion from one extreme to another and back to the initial point. The graph shown here of speed versus time goes from an s equals to zero, so zero speed, up to an s max and back to s equals to zero. And this entire motion, as we can see, takes 1.0 second. Now, as we can see, the motion shown here is only half an oscillation, which goes from, again, s equals to zero, um, on, which is s equals to zero on both extremes and s max in the middle. So the time period of the entire oscillation is hence twice two seconds, which is um, twice one second, which is actually two seconds. So the answer is option D. Question two. The following diagram shows the thickness of 10 metal coins using a micrometer. So the thickness, what is the thickness of one metal coin? So the, th the way to read a thickness on a micrometer screw garage is, first of all, you calculate the sleeve reading, which in this case, as we can see, is 5, 6, 7, and then there's another um, marking at the bottom, which indicates 7.5 millimeter. And then the thimble reading is, so for the, the thimble reading, you match the... Um, main line in the sleeve to whichever um, whichever division is on the thimble and as we can see this is this corresponds to zero, um, 22 so the thimble reading is hence 0 0.22 millimeters so adding these two together gives you 7.7 .7 millimeters which is the total thickness of 10 coins However, note that the question asks what is the thickness of one metal coin. So this step requires basic division. So if 10 coins is 7.72 millimeters, then one coin is basically that divided by 10, which is zero point, around 0 0.77 millimeters. So the answer is option B. Question 3. A car travels at constant speed around a bend. Which of the following statements about the motion of the car is not correct? Now, as we know, acceleration is known as the change in velocity with respect to time. Velocity is a vector and hence has two components. One is the magnitude, which we can refer to as simply the speed of the car. And the second is the direction. So in this example, even though the speed of the car is constant, its direction is constantly changing around the bend, and hence there is a change in velocity. Because the velocity is changing, there is also an acceleration. Hence, options A, C, and D are correct, either because of this property or because of the information already given in the question, and hence the incorrect option here is option B. Question 4. A stone is thrown vertically upwards and falls back to its starting point and stops. Taking velocity in the upward direction as positive, which of the following velocity time graphs is correct? Since velocity is positive when the stone is going up, while it's coming down, the velocity will be negative. Also note that the magnitude of the velocity, it decreases linearly when the stone is going up due to the effects of gravity and will be the magnitude increases linearly um, when the stone is falling back down, again, due to effects of gravity. Hence, the initial part will be a straight downward line with a negative gradient in the positive quadrant of V, whereas the second part will be continuation of that into the negative gradient uh, into the negative quadrant of V until you have um, until you have it suddenly reaching V equal to zero because of the initial stop. Hence the answer is option D. Question five. Some students want to calculate the density of pure copper. They measure the mass and volume of different samples of pure copper. Which of the following mass volume graphs shows the, the results? 
Now, density is mass upon volume. Since the density of the pure copper stays the same, as mass increases, so must volume. Also note that when volume is zero, mass must also be equal to zero. Hence, the correct answer is a, is a linear graph with a positive gradient passing through the origin 0, 0. Hence, the answer is option D. Question 6. A rocket has a mass of 100 kilograms. The force produced by the engine of the rocket is 3,000 newtons in the direction against the force of gravity. What is the acceleration of the rocket? From Newton's law of motion, we know force is mass into acceleration. Now, the acceleration of the engine, the one that it, is, it produces, is equal to the gravitational force plus the acceleration of the rocket. So rearranging the equation, the acceleration of the rocket is the acceleration of the engine, produced by the engine, minus the losses or minus the acceleration used to overcome the force of gravity. Now putting back the Newton's law of motion, we have acceleration of engine as at force of engine divided by the mass of engine. So plugging in the values of 3000 newtons per force of engine, mass of 100 kilogram and gravitational 10 meters per second square, we get 30 meters per second square minus 10 meters per second square. So the acceleration of the rocket is 20 meters per second square and the answer is option B. Question seven, an aircraft heads northeast at 400 kilometers per hour, the wind is blowing towards the northwest at 100 kilometers per hour. So first what we need to do is draw our directions. Um, so the first, uh, the first motion is 400 kilometers per hour northeast. So drawing a vector in the northeast direction with a magnitude which is almost proportional to 400 kilometers per hour. The second, the, the motion of the wind is northwest at 100 kilometers per hour. So drawing a, another vector in that direction with a length or magnitude which is one fourth the previous one, then using the law of parallelogram or parallelogram for vectors joining from one end up to another, it will give you the resultant vector, hence the answer is option A. Question 8. The diagram below shows a can of soft drink balanced on its edge. Where is the likely position of the center of gravity? So we know that for an object balanced on a pivot, balanced on a pivot the center of gravity is a point directly above or below the pivot point. Hence, A and C are slightly outside the orientation. D is the pivot point. Hence, the option, the correct answer is B, which is directly above the pivot point. Question 9. A force F acts on an L-shaped object pivoted at point P at different positions. Which of the following diagrams shows the position where force F is applied that will result in the lowest magnitude of moment? About pivot P. Now the moment of a force acting on an object or a point is given by the vector from the pivot to the for to the uh, to the position where the force is applied cross product with the force vector. Now as we can see the in option B we have the force acting in exactly the opposite direction to the vector from P or the line of action from P to the point where the force is applied. This means that the cross product in, this, in, in the component along this line of action will be negated giving the smallest magnitude of moment. Hence, the correct answer to the lowest magnitude of moment about point pivot P, the answer is option B. Question 10. A force of 500 newton is applied to a box to move it up the ramp is shown. The friction acting on the box is 300 newton. How much work is done against friction? So work is given by force times the displacement along that force. As can be observed, the, the question asks how much work is done against friction. Hence, out of the 500 newton of work done, only 300 newton is acting against friction, hence the work done will be 300 times 5 meters, and the answer is 1500 joules. Question 11. 
Smoke particles in a transparent box are observed using a microscope. A small point of light is seen to move around as shown. What does this experiment demonstrate about air molecules? Option A, they are in continuous random motion. This is true because as we can see, the point of light displays random continuous motion as displayed by the random directions of vectors um, end to end connected showing random motion. Now this is true because this, the point of light is constantly colliding with the smoke air particles, hence creating this sort of random observed motion of the point of light. Option B states they can be seen through a microscope. This is incorrect. The only, at least in this experiment, what is being observed through a microscope is the point of light and not the actual air molecules. Option C states that they move more quickly when they are heated. This is also incorrect since there is no such information given with respect to temperature. And option D states they move because of collisions with smoke particles. This is also incorrect. Hence the only qualitatively correct answer here is option A. Question 12. A small cork is fixed with wax to a metal plate. An electric heater is placed close to the plate. After some time, the wax melts and the cork drops off. How does heat reach the wax? So let's first draw a diagram, um, recreate the diagram to get a better understanding. Now, the heat reaches from the electric heater to the metal plate through radiation. So the heat transfers in multiple parts. The first part is from the electric heater to the metal plate, which is through radiation. Next, the heat transfers from the metal plate. Now, metal plate is a conductor, so it transfers from the metal plate to the wax through conduction as heat travels from one particle to the next, and this causes, which ca then causes the wax to melt and the cork to drop off. Hence, the, the modes of heat transfer here that are in play are radiation and conduction, so the answer is option C. Question 13. The diagram shows an electric heater being used to heat a beaker of water and a beaker of oil for several minutes. Both beakers are identical in size. The temperature of the water and the temperature of the oil increase constantly. The rise in temperature of the oil is much greater than that of the water. Which of the following explains observation? So we know that the energy given is mc delta t where m is the mass C is the heat capacity and T is the delta T is the change in temperature. Now Q and M are same for both oil and water because we know that they are of the same size and that the amount of energy given is the same because they share the common electric heater. Which means that Q by M, so rearranging of C oil and delta T of oil, and Q by M also equals C of water times delta T of water. So equating these two expressions together, we get that the heat capacity of oil times the change in temperature of oil should be equal to the heat capacity of water times the change in temperature of water. Um, rewriting these as fractions gives you, as ratios gives you that the change in temperature of oil upon, by the change in temperature of water should be equal to C of water divided by C of oil. Now, since we know that the rise in temperature of oil is much greater than that of water, we know that the ratio delta T oil by delta T water must then be greater than 1. Now due to this equality, we also know that C water by C oil, the ratio of heat capacity of water and heat capacity of oil should also be greater than 1. So moving, multiplying C oil both sides by C oil gives us that the heat capacity of water should be greater than the heat capacity of oil and hence the correct answer is Option D, where the oil has a lower heat capacity than water.